we are live. Uh, I'm going to give a few minutes because we're a little bit before six uh, for everyone to log in. Um, these 21 days so far today is 16. Uh, it's been really good. Um, good season for me. But uh, yeah, so we're live and we'll get started here in about a minute. If you've got, um, you know, if you're in early right now, I see we've got a few people on, um, you know, maybe share what's been uh, so powerful this uh, season of, of 21 days. Uh, it's been uh, a, just a, a cool time, not only uh, for myself, but to see the church kind of come around uh, a singular um uh, movement of praying and fasting. Uh, I'm really excited to uh, see where God takes us uh, from this. I, the next series that Kevin has, and we'll be um, announcing a lot of that uh, here this Sunday. Uh, it's just a really cool. So I'm I'm. Uh, oh, there's my alarms. It is six o'clock. So I'm going to assume most everyone is here. So uh, my name is. Brian, I take care of the uh, technical aspects uh, here at Be Hope Church, uh, so I'm a behind-the-scenes kind of guy, so uh, getting in front of a camera is not my forte, um, but we're looking at John 16 today, so if you've been following along, uh, today is day 16. Um, a lot of cool stuff in 16, uh, but I just, I want to kind of give you an a little overview and kind of um, what stuck out to me. Uh, the the part, the thing about chapter 16, and I, I racked my brain around it uh, a lot last night and just trying to figure out finally like what I wanted to share with you guys uh, about chapter 16. And there's um, there's a couple themes, but there's there's uh, 16 by itself uh, is almost uh, hard to take. So uh, we kind of have to get context of, of what we're looking at in chapter 16 because uh, this is uh, the same conversation of the Last Supper. So uh, Jesus has been speaking for a couple chapters now. And so if you've been following along um just kind of giving an overview, but if you haven't, uh, and this is your first day, uh, welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, it is exciting, but uh, we've started in 14 with a lot of this, of what he's setting up, what has said um, in 16. And, you know, he's talking about how he, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And then he goes into 15, that he is the vine and the branches. And uh, Ashley yesterday did a really good job of uh, relating that to, um, I just thought it was really cool, her, um, the way they use fire in Benin, and, and they look for those dry branches, because that's what they're good for at that point, um, is, is to burn them. And so, uh, you know, Jesus is setting up this conversation to get into 16, and um, so you, you've got this this path laid out of, of life in Christ, uh, you know, and, and, and 15, you know, we talked about how we need to abide in Christ and life is just better in Christ. Right. And then you get to 16 and actually really the end of 15. And, uh, then he's like, it's going to be really hard. <laughs> uh, you know, at the end of 15, you're going to be hated by the world. There's all these, uh, things that, um, you know, we really don't like uh, that that you're going to have pain. There's going to be sorrow, and so the one of the things that I want to I want to um, point out in 16 is that it's not always going to be easy. In fact, uh, he tells us uh, in kind of a weird way of encouragement that it's going to be hard. You know, and even says that I tell you these things 
so that you keep you from falling away. In verse 4, um, I've said these things to you so that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. And um, that's kind of a weird thing to be cognizant of, of just being like, okay, him telling me it's going to be hard. When it's hard, which is weird, but like it's a little less hard because we're not taken by surprise by it. Um, and, and we don't want to hear that it's going to be hard. Uh, but that's kind of a constant theme of, of chapter 16. And, um, you know, there, there are some great parts also of like, you know, he's sending his Holy spirit. So we, we have, uh, Jesus is going and his Holy spirit is coming. So we have that, but, um, but it still doesn't take away the bite, and and you know he even talks further after he mentions that of how hard it's going to be, and uh, the the piece that I want to focus on that I, that really just st- stood out to me is that um, it's going to be hard, but God wants to take our sorrow and turn it into joy. That's that's the other piece in here that um, even though it's going to be hard, uh, God wants to use it or turn it into joy. Or um, Kevin talked about how, you know, in the darkness uh, is where growth happens. And and when, you know, the seed and the planting um, analogy. And so these pieces of of hardship, right? And so um, verse 20 and 21 uh, it says, truly, truly, I say to you, sorry, and I'm in the ESV um, Bible here. Um, truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. And uh, that's verse 20. He's he's specifically talking about his death. And, and um, you know, this is the last moments leading up to his death. Uh, but he goes further and gives an analogy that really is um, applicable to all hardship because he uses uh, in 21, uh, when a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. And I just think that's such a, um, a beautiful reminder of, of hardship in in our lives, uh, I know that one can be applicable more to some than others. Uh, but I just remember um, my son being born, and obviously I didn't have to go through the childbirth. So I'm very thankful um, for all you women who have have to uh, bear that. But uh, you know, I got to see from afar that anguish, and and there is pain in this world. Um, but God wants to take it to joy. Uh, in verse 33, he says, In this world you will have trouble or tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Take heart. I have overcome the world. Um, so what... So what I'm praying and fasting for today is going to be really hard for me to share. Um, Just because it's very personal. Sorry, I tried practicing this, but... um, I always get emotional about it because hardship is very real. So I'm praying and fasting for today for my mom's family. And I'm sorry if you can't understand me because I'm trying to cry through this, but I'm praying for my mom's family. Um... In 2010, um, 
I lost my mom to cancer. And, um, that was very hard. Um, what's, what's so cool about God and yes, I lost my mom and I miss her. I miss her dearly. Um, but I look at where God has taken me, where God has used me and where I would have potentially got hung up on things that family matters or, 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 or what have you. Um, but I wouldn't be here today with the faith that I have today um, without the example that my mom left, but also going through her loss. Um, and I'm not saying that, you know, God designed it that way or, or you know, however, you know, I just know that God used her death to get me here. So to, today I want to pray for her family because I know that if she was here, she would still be going after their souls. And I want to, I want to advocate for her because I owe her so much. And I know that there are a lot of us, um, sorry, it's not a pretty cry. <laughs> there are a lot of us on here today that have sorrow, that are there, you're in the middle of sorrow. And I hope this is an encouragement that God wants to use your pain. Um, he wants to claim it, right? Because in the last verse there, it says, Take heart, I have overcome the world. The world will throw so much at us. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And so... Um, Please share in your comments here that um, things that you're praying for, I will be praying alongside of you. I know that there are um, so many family members that uh, we are praying for uh, corporately. And so um, I will be praying for you as well. And um, God has a plan. It's not always... Uh, the things that we want, um, but oftentimes, um, it's the things we need or, uh, God uses them to make us better, to make us stronger, and, um, that's my prayer for, for us today. Uh, let us pray, and, um, dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, God, that you have come, that you have uh, given us the, these words, uh, that we, um, your scripture, God, that you, um, you tell us that you have overcome the world. God, that you, um, that you give us these words of encouragement to, um, for us to look back on, for us to remember uh, in the times of trouble, uh, so that we don't fall away because um, you have something better for us if we um, abide in you and become those branches uh, that bear fruit, God. Um, I pray for uh, my family. I pray for the families of those um, who are watching. And um, we love you and we uh, want to honor you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys, for... Um, waking up at 6 a.m. with me, and um, I'm excited, and we'll, uh, we'll be praying this, this whole day and the rest of the week. Thanks.